Okay, I've got the new part in. Uh, just noticed on the new one, this piece right here, it wraps around up and spot welded right here. That piece is for the uh, bumper bracket. That's this piece here. Uh, but I'm, I'm just going to save this original piece. I'd rather not cut it off the frame rail. So I'm just going to cut this piece off here. Uh, weld this along the top. Back to this piece. And uh, that will eliminate this. And I won't have any alignment issues with my bumper brackets. Because all these are still in factory position here. Um, I'm going to get this thing test fit after that. And then I'll, I'll be back to show you the test fit. Okay, I've got the bumper bracket pieces cut off of the new radiator support. Just drilled it through. Because that, that way that will give me a hole right here to weld this piece to. I needed a, a hole for the plug weld anyway. And also a hole right here. Uh, do that on both sides. Hole there. And hole up here. Uh, now it's ready to test fit. I'll get that in, show you that in just a second. All right, I had to change my plan just a little bit. I went to slide this piece in, this new radiator support. Um, this piece here that I cut off the new one, uh, with these still on the car, I wasn't able to push it through, it's just straight through the frame rails, and there was no other way to drop it straight down from the top. Uh, these flanges here prevented that it's too wide even if you bend these down out of the way you still can't get it in there so what I had to do was uh, and I've got it clamped in right now and somewhat in position what I had to do was drill the spot welds out of this piece uh, in here that I'm going to save break it free from the frame and then I was able to insert this side of it behind this piece and then slide this into the frame um, and then I took this piece back, or put this piece back in here, just knocked it in uh, with this off, just knocked it in between the frame and this, and then bolted it back to the bumper bracket so that it would be, be flush with the other, uh, the other two bolt surfaces. And that way I've got that in position, I know where it needs to be. So once I get the, the radiator support square to the car, I'll be able to to tack, probably tack this back to the original piece and since I've got holes drilled in this piece already where I took the spot welds out that gives me a plug weld hole so I'll reuse this piece I'm probably going to tack weld this through this hole so that this piece will come off with it and then I can drill holes through it so I can weld it completely through to the frame um, I'll show you what I've got as far as uh, getting it square this is my tram gauge that I made I'm using, uh, looking on these holes here, taking this hole right there and lining that up to the, uh, I believe that's the fender mounting hole there. I'm going to take that measurement. This is non calibrated, so there's no measurement, no actual measurement here, but as long as I get it square from one side to the other, we'll go to the other side here. Same hole here, and there uh, drops right in. So now I've got it square to the car, as far as the where the fenders are going to mount. But I'm going to have to put a fender up there on each side just to get it to know that I've got it in the right place and uh, to get it welded in. Uh, before I do any welding, I'm going to make sure the fenders will fit. These holes will line up, even if it's square, it may not be in the correct position front to back. So. That's why I've got the hood on it, so I can drop it down, uh, see if the latch will line, line up and, and close right, which it's doing. So the next step will be to put the fenders on, make sure those are going to line up to the hood. And at that point, I'll take the radiator support back out, drill the holes in it to, to plug weld it, get it prepped and put it back in. Uh, and that'll be next. All right, got the fenders somewhat bolted in place. Got a Pretty decent gap there. Um, both of these fenders I had shipped in, they got a little bit tweaked in shipment, so I know I'm close enough uh, to where I can just adjust these after I get the radiator support welded in. But I've got it to where I know the radiator support should be 
um, in the right place. You can't really test the headlights because I've got this clamp here holding this in. But as long as I've got the fenders to fit it and everything's square, I think the headlights and all will be fine. Um, but you can see the gaps, they're, they're decent. These hood hinges are going to have to be uh, bent up slightly. Fix this step. There's a little bit of a step right there. I don't think I can get that out in the hinge. But everything's lining up well enough to where I know I can weld the, weld the support in there. Um, I'll pull the support out, uh, drill some holes for the plug welds, and uh, I'm going to mark where it is now and, and then reinstall everything else again, double check where I am, and then I'll weld it in place um, and then pull everything back off again so I can paint it. Um, that'll be the next steps, getting that radiator support back out and getting it ready to weld in. Okay, here's the radiator support ready to go in. Um, I marked all the holes that I needed to drill, drilled those out, uh, dollied the flanges, and then ground the uh, ground all the burrs off. Got two coats of uh, weld through primer everywhere that is going to be a mating surface to the car. Uh, right in here, same thing on both sides. Work well to the frame here and to the uh, apron there. Um, once we get it on, on the car, I'll go back through. Um, We've also got the self-etching primer, excuse me, the uh, weld through primer here where all the welds will go and also up on the apron. And once the, uh, once the part's in, go back through and we'll, uh, we'll either scratch the weld through primer off the car in, the, in this hole or we'll just take a spot blaster and clean this out so we've got uh, direct contact metal there to weld to. Uh, we're not welding directly on the weld through primer. Uh, I'll have that in shortly. I'll get it back to the original position and we'll start to tack it. I decided I'm going to try the spot blaster on these on these uh, weld sites here. Uh, speed blaster from Zendex. Uh, it's got a flow, flow valve here. I'm just going to open this up. And then this tip here will seal to the weld. And this will collect all the excess abrasive. This is just aluminum oxide from Harbor Freight. of those spots that I can get to. If not, I'll just scratch the paint out. I'll be back when it's done. All right, I've got to a few of them with it. Um, didn't get to all of them. Didn't want to get. Didn't want to move my clamp here. Uh, but you can see, it just sandblasts that just small circle where the uh, weld through primer was in this hole. So now we have uh, just bare steel there to weld to. Uh, did these three here, and I got to. Just about all of these up through here and uh, also over on this side. The rest of them I'll just scratch out with a, a little pick or a small flathead screwdriver. I'm going to start welding now. I'll show you a few of those and then I'll show you the completed, completed weld job. Here's a shot of the welder I'll be using. Had this welder probably close to 10 years. Uh, Lincoln Weld Pack 175 HD. Seems to work pretty well. Um, I'm going to start with this spot here and be able to take this thing out of the way. And then I'll put a spot here, other side, uh, right here, and then one on each side at the bottom. Uh, always have a brush and a a pair of side cutters with you. Every time you every time you stop the welder, every time you stop the welder, you're going to get a little little ball here that's uh, oxidized metal. You want to cut that off. Every time you do a plug weld, run it out about a half an inch and cut some more off. Then you go to the next one.
and put a light on. Try to zoom it in if I can for you. And I'll be welding that one right there closer to the bumper bracket. Here's the first one. And go down to the second one there. I can only get two here since I had to add that bracket to it. I wasn't able to drill uh, this hole out. There's a piece behind it. Um, and go up to the uh, apron up here next. Alright, this is what I typically do when I can't get the spot blaster in there. I'll take this flathead screwdriver and just clean the hole out. Most, most of the uh, well through primer out of the hole. And it's good to weld. Cut off that burned into the wire here for every hole. All right, everything's welded in. Uh, here's a shot of the welds. Um, it welds all underneath here. These were a little difficult to get to. Um, welds along the frame. There's actually two underneath there. Weren't as bad as I thought they would be to get to, but uh, next step is gonna be to grind down these welds. Um, put a little filler in some of them that are visible just to smooth those out and then I'll mask the car off um, enough to paint the radiator support and get it as close as I can to the original color it was to sort of match the engine bay uh, I'll be back once that's ready to spray okay I've got it ready to paint uh, I've got everything masked off that I don't want to paint uh, I got a little Aluminum foil wrapped around the AC lines. A little trick I learned somewhere, I can't remember. Uh, a little bit of filler on some of these welds just to smooth those out. A little bit in there. Same on both sides. And we'll give it a little bit of a uh, etch primer over the bare metal. And uh, probably just go straight over that with uh, a little bit of silver base. We'll see what I, what I decide after this. Probably just go, go straight to base, we'll see.
put a little bit of this uh, Sim Easy Coat. This is a factory match, uh, like matches the factory etch primer. Uh, where there wasn't a whole lot of silver from the factory, I'm going to put this back just to make it look original. I'm going to put base everywhere else. I'm going to miss, miss some base over this. I think that's good. Here's kind of a close up of that. Matches the factory green really well. I sprayed all underneath the bottom just because I can't really get the spray gun under there. Uh, especially since I don't have a PPS system on it where I can spray it upside down. Here's the green. A bit more here. And this stuff is direct to metal, so you can go straight over the metal. I just do the etch primer because I wasn't going to put this everywhere that I put it. Alright, now it's going to be ready for some base coat in just a minute. Let that flash. Okay, I'm mixing up some base. This is uh, leftover Toyota Silver from uh, 2011. I'm reuse this, get rid of it at least using some uh, just standard urethane reducer. I don't use my good reducer that goes into my it goes with my base coat and stuff like this. It's kind of a waste. This silver should be almost exact. It's going to be close enough for what we're doing here that's never going to get seen. Or very little of it will.
Be back in a second. I want to spray it. All right, here goes the silver.
All right, I'm gonna end this video here. It's pretty much done. It's silver now, at least. That's where it was welded in. Another shot of that side. Did my best to get down in here with the color. It's probably hard to see, but there's enough there. All this still looks pretty much factory now. If you know what you're looking for, you can tell it's been replaced, but it's never going to be perfect without a spot welder, which I don't have. Can't justify buying one of those. Next video will be of it being built up and uh, sheet metal hung on it.